Hello there, welcome to episode 3. Today we will be covering camera rotation. Today we're going to start things off a little differently. We're going to update the colors of a little test map here and add some more terrain to test with. The first thing we want to do is add a material for our obstacle. So we'll name this one obstacle material. Now we want to apply that to our three obstacles we have here. Okay, great. Last thing for these guys is to choose a nice color. I'm going to choose a sort of beetroot red because I think it looks nice with our player color. You can choose any colors, of course. I'm just going to increase the player's saturation a bit here. The lighting makes everything seem a bit washed out. Let's replace this boring plane with something that has a bit more depth. How about another cube? Create an empty game object to keep things slightly more organized. Slightly more organized. Then reset the transform and add a cube. Okay, next we will make a material for the ground. We can just call this one ground material. Okay, let's stretch this out so that we have something that looks reasonable. Now I'll add the material and see how it looks. It looks a bit too dark, I think. Let's play around with that. Alright, let's add some extra platforms to give the map some flavor. And next we're going to change the background. I'm setting it a nice solid color. Something like teal or turquoise. And finally we're just going to add another side platform here. This is the one we're going to be using to test the camera rotation. So I'm just going to duplicate the ground and spin it around. Okay, finally what we want to do is create our trigger. We're going to use the act of the player walking into this trigger box to rotate the camera rather than the press of a button. With this, I'm just going to place a new cube in the scene. I'm going to make a new material for it. I'm going to set it to transparent orange. Make sure to check the is trigger checkbox in the box collider settings. Okay, now that we've placed this trigger in the world, if you go into play mode and try and walk through it, you'll notice that the player can't actually pass through, which is a bit of a problem. Let's fix that up. Unity actually has a built-in layer for this, so it's called ignore raycast. Anything that's on that layer will not be raycasted against by default. I didn't realize this until the time of recording, so during the footage you might see that the triggers are on a layer called Trigger. Don't worry about that. Just set yours to ignore Raycast and it will work the same. Great, now we can pass through the trigger as expected. Back in our scripts directory, we want to create a script for this trigger. I'm going to call mine Camera Rotation Trigger. Now I'm going to create another empty game object. I'm going to call this one Camera Mover. Reset the transform. Then I'm going to put the camera rotator underneath Camera Mover in the tree. So we've got a nested, three deep camera. Camera Mover, Camera Rotator, Main Camera. Lastly, we want to drag the Camera Movement script off of the main camera and stick it onto this Camera Mover object. Okay, we're going to create a new script and it's called camera rotation. This one is going to sit on our camera rotator game object that we just created. Okay, at the top we've got a serialized field called rotation direction. We haven't created this enum yet, so just stick this in there and we'll have a look at that in a second. Next up, we've got another serialized field. This is a float. I'm going to set the speed to 360. That means it's going to be able to rotate 360 degrees in one second. Now lastly we've got a private quaternion target rotation. We're just going to set that to quaternion.identity which is just the default quaternion. Now in our update method we want to check if the transform rotation is not equal to the target rotation. If that's the case then we want to rotate towards the target rotation at a speed of speed times time dot delta time. Now, last up, we're going to add a public method called rotate2, which is going to take one argument. 
that's a vector 3. Inside this method, we're going to define a relative position, which is just the current position plus the position that we want to rotate to. Then we're going to set the target rotation using this quaternion.lookRotation method. Okay, now we're going to go over this rotation direction script that I mentioned earlier. So after you create the script, wipe everything out, just leave the using directions at the top. Now we're going to start with a public enum called rotation direction. It's going to have four fields, forward, left, back, and right. Now we're going to create a public static class called direction. It's going to have one function, which is also static. It returns a vector three and it takes a rotation direction. And in here, we're just going to have a switch, which is going to return forward, left, back, or right. Now there's a default case here, but that should never be reached. Okay, with those two scripts out of the way, it's time to finally tackle the trigger script. So go back to the camera rotation trigger and let's walk through this. Now the first thing we want is a serialized field, which is a game object camera rotator. That's just going to be a reference to the camera rotator, which we created earlier. The next two serialized fields are going to be rotation directions. Now, this is going to be the direction the camera is going to rotate towards when you enter and when you leave, or rather when you're inside and when you leave. And lastly, we're going to have a private camera rotation, which is just a reference to the script. In our start method, we want to get that camera rotation script. And then we also want to disable the mesh renderer on our cube so that the triggers aren't visible during the game. Okay, now we get to the on trigger functions. And I'm going to use on trigger stay and on trigger exit. Now the reason that we use on trigger stay instead of on trigger enter is because if you have two of these right next to each other, which you probably will, and you move back and forth between them, it'll trigger twice and it'll probably not go to the right rotation. So this on trigger stay will just make sure the camera is continually rotated the right direction. Now that sounds expensive, except if you remember in our camera rotation script, we have that check to make sure that we're not running the rotation script unless the rotation is incorrect. Now in these functions, we're just going to call camera rotation dot rotate two, which is what we wrote earlier. That's why we made it public. And we're just going to use this other static method in the direction class we just made to vector. Now in the on stay, we're going to use the target direction. And in the on exit, we're going to use the exit direction. That means when we enter a trigger, it'll rotate towards that target direction. When we exit the trigger, it'll rotate to our exit direction. Okay, there's one more thing we need to do before we finish this episode, and that is modify the movement script for our player. Currently, if you walk into the trigger and the camera rotates to the right, and you press W, the character from your perspective is gonna move left. That's really unintuitive. So let's just quickly go into the player script and see how we can fix that up. Okay, the first thing we want to do is add a serialized field. This is going to be yet another reference to the camera rotator. This is going to be used to determine which way is forward when we press W, which way is back when we press S, etc. Okay, down in our play input section, we want to swap out the references to vector3.forward, vector3.back, etc. to local references. So we're going to use camera rotator dot transform dot forward and then we're going to use negative camera rotator dot transform dot forward because there is no back on the transform and we're just going to swap out the other two exactly the same but using negative right and right okay that should be all that we need to do uh, just make sure that your triggers are wired up correctly. So down here, you need to make sure that they have the camera rotator set. They have the correct direction set. And make sure that 
your player has a counter rotator set. Okay, that should be good to go. Let's have a look. Alright. Great. Now I press D and I go to the right, which was previously backwards. That's pretty cool. Might be a little bit jarring. And you can walk diagonally. That's cool. Not intended. We're going to have to fix that eventually. But for now, this is pretty cool. I just added another platform here to see what would happen. And now if we come out of this side, it turns around. Um, there's no concept of actual ground yet, so that'll be something we need to add in the future. In fact, we might do that for next episode. So I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for sticking around, and have a great night. Catch you in the next one.